Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? My name's Lee Brandt. I'm a developer ad advocate at Okta. Today, we're going to build our first Nest.js app. So let's check it out. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is create an Okta application. We can use the Okta CLI to do this. Easiest way to do it. So we just do uh, Okta apps create, and it'll give me a little uh, prompt here. So since we'll be using Postman to test it, this is going to be a little weird because rather than creating a uh, React app or a Vue or Angular app as a front end for to test our API, we're just going to test it with Postman. And uh, so the stuff we're going to put in is going to feel a little weird. But let's just call this Postman Tester. We're going to call it a single page app because uh, Postman really is a single page app. So. <clears throat> And the uh, callback URI, we're going to want it to be um, the Postman callback URI, which is this right here, which is just <clears throat> oauth.pstmn, or Postman without the vowels, .io slash v1 slash callback. The uh, post logout redirect URI, you want it to be oauth.postman.io, which is what's already set in the default. Now it's going to go off and uh, it's going to configure this new application in Okta and then it's going to spit out our issuer and our client ID. So I'm just going to copy it here off into a file so I can refer to it later. Copy it back in here in just a few minutes. So now that that's done, we're going to need to open our application, uh, basically create a folder and uh, create the API um, in Visual Studio. So let's do that next. All right, so now that you've got Postman set up to be your front end for this API, let's go ahead and do what we came here to do, which is creating a Nest.js API. So if you don't have the Nest CLI installed, you'll want to install it. And that's the command for that to install it globally is this which is just npm install globally nest.js cli at 7.5.4, which is the uh, latest version, but I already have it installed. So what we're going to do is it's going to create the application. So we'll do nest new library API. And this will go ahead and create the application. We want to use npm for our package manager. You can use yarn if you'd like. Um, in which case your command would have been yarn install uh, nest.js CLI. But <clears throat> once it's installed, then all we've got to do is open that file in Visual Studio. So we come in here to our file. <clears throat> and here's our application. So now that we've got this um, set up, the next thing we're going to want to do is install some um, dependencies that we need. The first one being .env. Now, .env is an environment variable creator. What it does is it allows you to create environment variables by putting them into a special file called a .env file. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, it's basically just properties like a, a name and a value and once you start up your application, it'll read all of that in, into environment variables for you. The next thing we want to do is install Passport, which is uh, 0.4.1 as of uh, the time of this recording. The next thing we're going to need to install for Passport is the HTTP bearer, which allows us to read bearer tokens in Passport. The next thing we need is we need to be able to connect Nest to Passport. And last but not least, the Okta JWT verifier. And what this will do is once we get a token, we can pass it back to the API 
and then the API can verify that that token is valid before doing anything. So, now in order to use the .env package, we're going to create a new file here at the root called .env. And we're just going to put some values in there that we're going to want to use. In this case, our client ID, which we just got from the Octa CLI a few minutes ago. So we'll get that and plug it in here. And then the issuer we also got from the Octa CLI. So let's go ahead and grab that over here. My little text file that I saved it off to. And now that we've got that, that can be saved and we're all good. Now, now we can start writing our application. Okay, so to get started with our application, there's a few uh, terms we need to get um, out of the way first. It's just kind of nests things. Um, the first one is controllers, and controllers kind of handle the requests coming in from the client, where they go and who's going to handle them. Um, providers is kind of a catch-all name for services, factories, any other type of classes, repositories, whatever, um, and they can be injected into other classes um, by decorating them with the add injectable decorator. Um, finally, there are modules. Um, the role of a module is kind of glue everything together, to glue controllers and um, services, provide, controllers and providers together. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write um, our first auth module. So we'll create a new folder here called auth. called auth and inside of that we'll create a new file and we'll call it http st uh, dot strategy dot ts okay <clears throat> and the code for this is here um, so you'll see we're bringing in the http exception and injectable from the common nest library. Um, we're also bringing in passport from the nest passport library. Um, and we're bringing in strategies from passport. Um, so the auth service, um, don't worry about that quite yet. We're not to creating that yet, but, um, so the, uh, HTTP strategy we've got here, um, extends the passport strategy, which we brought in from up here. Um, it is marked as injectable. Um, it's got a constructor here that's going to um, bring in the auth service, um, just like normal. Let me go ahead and format this document so you can see it right. <clears throat> and so it's just going to pass things up to super um, or call the, call the super. Um, and then every just about everything in Nest is asynchronous. So... Um, the validate function is going to take the token string and the done function, um, and it's going to return an await, and it's basically going to validate the token from the auth service, which we're going to create in a minute here. Um, if it does catch an error, it's just going to call the done method, and basically, which is going to throw this exception, and it's going to say that the token's not valid. It didn't pass the token validation. All right, so now that's pretty straightforward. But let's take a look at the uh, auth service itself. So we'll create in that same folder, we'll just call this auth.service.ts. <clears throat> now the auth service code um, we're bringing an injectable again from um, common. We're bringing in the Okta JWT verifier and the config service, which we haven't created yet. We're making the auth service injectable. Um, we're going to have an Okta verifier and an audience that we want to get, which we're going to get from config, um, except for the Okta verifier, of course. Now, the Okta verifier is going to be created in here. The config service gets injected. Um, the Okta verifier right here 
is going to create a new Okta verifier with the issuer and the client ID from the configuration file. And the audience is also going to be set from the configuration file, but we don't need that to create the Okta verifier. We need that when we go to actually verify the access token. So this async method here, this validate token, takes in that token string and it waits to see the if the access verify token and then it returns the, the JWT if everything went okay. All right, now that we've got the auth service created, we can go ahead and save that. And the next thing we need to do is create the module that's gonna glue these two together. So create a new file here and we'll call this auth.module.ts. And we'll go ahead and bring in this code. It's not very much code here. All we're doing is we're importing the config module, which we haven't created yet, the auth service and the HTTP strategy, which we have created. But since it's relying on something that hasn't been created yet, um, Visual Studio doesn't, doesn't like this very much. But sometimes Visual Studio gets a little confused and you can just do that. Oh, because I called it HTTP stra HTTP strategy. <laughs> okay, so let's rename this to the right name. And now it probably looks just fine. Okay. So all this is going to do is just tie the, the prov providers and the config module together. So now that we've created the um, auth service and everything in the auth module folder, um, we're going to create a folder under source called config so we can create that config stuff. And inside of config, we're going to create the service for that. Config.service.ts. Now I'm nervous. Okay. Looks like it's spelled right. And my config service looks like this. We're going to bring in .env because we need it to read in those uh, environment files. The config service basically is just going to read in those values and create um, the key value string, the value string. We're going to pass it a key. It's going to pass as a value string back. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to format the document while I'm talking. So now we have the config for service set up. And you can see that's basically all it's doing is it's reading in from that .env file and whatever key you send it, it's got a property here that will return you back the value for that key. So um, next thing we need to do to the config folder is add the module. New file, config.module.ts. Make sure I spelled that right. And the config module is also not super complicated. Um, we're just bringing in module because we need that for the um, decorator. <clears throat> um, we're going to set up our providers, which is our config service. And we're going to use this value for the config service. We're going to pass in a new config service with the uh, node environment.env. So this can be used for production or testing. We're using nothing, so it's just .env. Um, and it's going to export the config service. And that's how our config module just glues together that one config service file. Um, next, we need to write a controller. So we're just going to use the one that's already built here in the app.service.ts file. And we're going to import some code into it that does some of our routing for us. So um, <clears throat> we want the app service to be injectable. And the app service has a, uh, an array in it of books. Rather than connecting to a database, we're just going to get them from a list. 
So we've got get all books, get books, uh, get a book, and then update a book. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is um, go over to our app module to kind of wire this all together. And you see, we just brought in the app controller and we said, hey, we've got a controller in here called app controller. Then the app controller code is the guy that does most of our work for us. So in here, we've brought in controller, get, post, param, all those things from um, Nest.js common. We've marked this as a controller for books. So when somebody goes to slash books, that's where they're going to get. Um, and it's going to take in the app service that we just updated. Okay. So we're going to also use guards, which is the, which is the auth guard, which is our uh, Nest.js passport. And since we've told passport that we're going to be using this HTTP strategy, um, that's what it will use. So the get all books function, we again format this, um, goes and does app service get all books, which is just going to go to our app service and run get all books. But it is already protected by our auth guard, so they can't even get to it until they've authenticated or until the token's been validated that gets sent. Again, get book takes in an ID param and just does app service dot get book with that ID. This post method uses the guard again, but it just updates the book. So it takes in the body as a book and it returns this dot app service update book and update book will do that for us. So that is all of our nest JS application. So at this point we should be able to run this thing and watch it work. Okay, so to get tested, to get started testing the application, it's a little bit more complicated than normal because we're going to be doing our authentication through Postman. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, run this application. So let's just go in here and do an npm run start. Or you can just type npm start. And we'll have the nest start here and it's started. So now our application is running and we can actually make requests to it. Okay, now that our Nest.js API is up and running, um, we're going to test it with Postman. So once you've got Postman open, just go here and create a new request. Go right to the authorization tab. We're going to choose OAuth2 and over here, it's going to prefix it with bearer for me. Now, I've done this a couple of times now, so uh, make sure bearer is in the header prefix. Um, authorization with PKCE is what we want, or authorization with code with Pixie. We want to make sure that authorize using browser is turned on, because basically what it's going to do is going to redirect out to Octo login and then send me back my token. Um, the URL that you want to put in the auth is the one that you got with the, uh, that is your issuer with slash V1 slash authorize on the end of it. That's the authorization endpoint. And then your issuer again with slash V1 slash token is your token endpoint. Um, put in your client, client ID, which that is the one. Um, SHA-256. Um, the scopes that you want to look for are open ID, email, and profile. <clears throat> Again, these are likely pre-populated for me because I've done this a couple of times now. So some of these things you may have to type in yourself. This state string can be anything you want it to be. Um, it's just a, a state key to check. Um, <clears throat> and then send client credentials and body. Then when you click get new access token, it'll pop you up onto a browser. 
you'll log in and when you come back, it'll say authentication complete. Now, once you hit proceed, it'll take you to use that token. Then you can click on use that token. It'll populate it over here in the app, uh, available tokens. And then I can put a URL in here, which we want to go to localhost port 3000 slash books. And when I run it, hopefully I did type it correct. All right. When I uh, run it, I'll see those three books are returned. Now, if I just went to like books one, I can send it, it'll just return that one. Books two. Okay. Um, so you can test this out to your heart's content. And this is a really good way to test APIs, especially if you're an API builder. It's been my experience that a lot of companies have like an API team and, an, and a UI team. Um, this is a Postman is a really great way to test your API. Um, and this, this is all part of the new Postman UI that'll allow you to create uh, or log in um, to the application without having to build a little login API or login UI for you to, for you to test. And you can actually see it if you come in here and let's say you just, let's just put a dash one on the end of this. And I try and run this, it should say, well, it says internal server error. The status code should be, um, should be 401 unauthorized. Yeah. So I'm sure the internal error was the fact that it had a dash one on the end of it. And it was like, that's, that access token is definitely not valid but I'm trying to process it and it's too long for an access token. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you got out a lot out of this uh, Nest.js application. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. That's what the kids say, right? Like and subscribe. Um, and make sure to hit the bell notification thing so you get notifications when we have new content coming out. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and we'll see you next time.